what I want to do in this video is I want to discuss something called something called omega oops something called start over omega oxidation and I want to be perfectly clear this is very very different than beta oxidation if I have just a generic fatty acid right if I have a fatty acid right right I can label my carbons right this is the alpha carbon it's the one adjacent to the carboxyl this is my beta in fact in beta oxidation that's the one that gets oxidized right here's my gamma carbon here's my delta carbon epsilon and so forth and I can keep numbering but always always the terminal carbon most distal from the carboxyl carbon is the omega carbon and in in this particular reaction set or this reaction scheme the omega carbon is what gets oxidized and so what we're going to do is we're going to look at a specific fatty acid and, and to be honest about omega oxidation the most common um, the, the most common um, length of fat the most common length of um, the most common length of fatty acids that get oxidized in this pathway are 10 and 12 carbons. So you usually won't have anything else oxidized in this pathway unless it's 10 or 12 carbons. Okay. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to look at something. Let's just say it has 12 carbons. Let's look at something that has 12 carbons. All right. So here is this. So let's say one, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And what I want you to notice about this particular pathway is it's not dependent on coenzyme A. So in omega oxidation, you don't have the initial fatty acyl coenzyme A synthetase. So it's just basically a free, a free fatty acid, and it ends up being oxidized initially by a cytochrome P450 enzyme. And this enzyme that I'm about to say is a cytochrome P450 enzyme, and specifically it is a cytochrome P450 monooxygenase. Cytochrome P450 monooxygenase. And essentially what this enzyme does is it takes molecular oxygen and it incorporates one of the oxygen atoms into the fatty acid, and the other one goes away as water. And so you're going to have to burn an NADPH in this reaction. And so what you're going to get out is water and NADP+. Okay. And so what you're going to get out of this reaction is you're going to get a terminal alcohol. So here's my carboxyl carbon, right? And I go out to 12, right? So I get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then it terminates in a hydroxyl group, right? So I have an alcohol right then what's going to happen is i'm going to and let me scroll over i'm going to i'm going to oxidize it with an enzyme and, it, and this is by the way this is a class of enzymes this isn't just the name of the enzyme this is a class but it belongs to the, it's a member of the alcohol dehydrogenases and what it does is it uses nad and it's nad plus and generates an NADH. And what it essentially does is it oxidizes the alcohol up to an aldehyde. So what you end up with is you still have this carboxyl carbon. We'll do 12 carbons, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then this is going to be an aldehyde. Fair enough. Well, then this, this aldehyde is going to get consumed even further. It's going to get oxidized even further. And it's done by an aldehyde dehydrogenase. And once again, aldehyde dehydrogenases are a class of molecules, or a class of enzymes. Oops, I wrote molecule. Oops. Aldehyde dehydrogenase. And again, it's an NAD plus dependent enzyme, and it's going to generate an NADH. And so what you get out of this is a terminal carboxylic acid, or a carboxylate at physiological pH. So it's still going to be 12 carbons, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And now you're going to have this, okay? 
Now, there, it's going to go through a form of beta oxidation, but in the process of doing that, it's going to kick off an acetyl-CoA. It's going to kick off an acetyl-CoA. So if you think about this, right, if you think about this, here's one carbon and here's two carbon, right? So essentially this right here, right here, this is 12 carbons, right? So if I lose two carbons in beta oxidation, I'll put a beta here so you know it's beta oxidation. If I lose two carbons, I'm left with 10. And what ends up happening it, through a mechanism that we're not really concerned with here, it ends up splitting the 10 carbon molecule and it splits it into two different molecules. The first one is something that you should recognize. I'll go ahead and draw it here. And that's succinate. Succinate is one of the products that gets split into, and this is four carbons, right? This is four carbons, and succinate is there going to go into the TCA cycle, right? It's going to get consumed by succinate dehydrogenase, produce FADH2, and all that. But there's another product, another product that we haven't seen yet, and it looks like this. It looks similar to succinate, but it's obviously not succinate. Two, three, four, five, six and it's called adipate. And adipate is not really a molecule that they really teach you a lot about in Biochem 1 and 2, although if you do more advanced studies in biochemistry, this molecule does crop up quite a bit. And it turns out that we have a whole new, um, there's a whole pathway to degrade adipate and it involves coenzyme A, and we'll do that in another video, but for now I just wanted to really look at alpha, or excuse me, omega oxidation. So remember, the omega carbon, regardless of how many carbons long the chain is, the omega carbon is always the terminal carbon most distal from the carboxylate. And so initially it's gonna get consumed by a P450 monooxygenase enzyme, and it's gonna turn into an alcohol, a terminal alcohol, or an omega alcohol, and then it's gonna become an omega aldehyde, and then an omega carboxylate. And in the process, we generate two NADHs, although we do have to waste an NADPH. But we end up getting some energy out of it because after all the NADHs go to the electron transport chain and they end up entering the respiratory chain at NAD NADH ubiquinone oxidoreductase, right? But our, really con our concern here right now is adipate because we know what succinate does, right? It goes into the TCA cycle. Adipate is our concern now, and in the next video, we'll explore the catabolism of adipate, and we'll see that it actually gets degraded to things that we know. See you in the next video.